You could have literally put 2,500 stocks on the watch list tomorrow to the downside if the market confirms, and that really shows you where the sentiment is. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. My apologies, there was no video last night. Uh, my daughter uh, had a basketball game, so I figured, well, let me just record the video uh, today. So, you know, let's talk about it. You know, we, we knew what this was, right? We knew what this was, we knew what this wasn't. Uh, we had a really good hammer three days ago, and this basically set off the question, well, how long can we get a dead cat bounce? And this is all it was. There's a big difference between a stop, a stock moving up or a stock going higher. And today, uh, and what we saw for the last three days were stocks moving up from a very, very uh, technical area called the bullish hammer. That's it. And the question was, how long uh, can this dead cat bounce was? And, and we, we discussed this two nights ago, that for this to be considered more than a dead cat bounce, we would have to uh, reclaim the 50-day moving average. This is where, uh, this is the battleground, right? This is the important area where things uh, were settled. And, you know, we had a pretty good uh, three-day rally. Uh, and yesterday we started seeing stocks just basically stop. For the exception of Tesla, everything basically just kind of stopped yesterday. Uh, I was very, very tired from the dead cat bounce and they basically started rolling over. And today was basically the same thing. And the only difference between yesterday's rest and potentially reclaiming back the 10-day moving average, well, the markets gave up, right? The markets gave up, the participants wake up, the bulls gave up, everybody gave up, and we got rejected back-to-back uh, -back days on the 20-day moving average. And the one thing that no bull wanted to see, or at least no bull wanted to see that believes in technical analysis is losing back the five-day moving average. And that's exactly uh, what we did. And that's not a good thing, right? Plain and simple, it's not a good thing. Uh, if you're investing in this market, uh, you know, my broadcast probably does little value for you because again, we're looking for uh, taking advantage of opportunities on the long and short side, depending how the market closes on a day-to-day -day basis. If you are holding technology, Whatever I'm saying going into tomorrow has no effect on you. Again, but one day, you know, Amazon will be at 5,000. Uh, you know, Apple will be at 300. Uh, and the video will be at 500 or blah, blah, blah. But guess what? It's not going to be tomorrow. And that's exactly what we deal with uh, on this broadcast every single day from the trading aspect, uh, taking the lead from technical analysis and the data that we, um, you know, basically, you know, basically take, take, take in and we trade off all that uh, information waiting for the market to confirm. And, you know, basically we have a two and a half percent decline uh, engulfing today, they definitely engulfed the last two days of the dead cat bounce. And this is the bottom, right? This is the bottom uh, of the wedge on January the 10th that it basically started this little dead cat bounce. And now this little dead cat bounce is dead. That's it, it's over. So uh, the bulls had a chance in the afternoon to reclaim back the five day moving average and they did not. Uh, you saw a lot of strength this morning, uh, you know, on. Um, on, I think it was tech, I think it was Taiwan Semiconductor had this really, really aggressive move. Uh, pretty much gave back, uh, you know, gave back you know, most of its gains. But it, it's not that Taiwan that, that kind of set the, the, the market spinning and the semiconductor spinning. It was NVIDIA, right? It, it was NVIDIA. And, you know, we were talking about for the last two weeks or so how NVIDIA has been sold very, very aggressively. This was the first one uh, to be sold today. This is the first one that went red today. And slowly but surely, uh, other market participants that were just very, very tired took the lead from NVIDIA and started uh, losing its lunch, losing its ranges. And that's kind of where we are right now. If you look at most names, right, and it doesn't make a difference. I could have, I could have done, I, I give you a perfect example. When I start doing my uh, research on for the next day, I usually have to go, you know, I, I use TC2000. The space bar feature is pretty cool, right? Because you could go for all you guys who use TC2000 for, for your research. You hit the space bar, right? You hit the space bar one after another after another, and the charts pop up right in front of you. So you, you can make a determination in seconds what chart looks good, what setup looks bad, blah, 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 blah. Um, I literally went one by one by one. They were all setting up to the downside. The first six stocks 
uh, that I went through on my configuration uh, literally was shorts for tomorrow. And, and that's the whole point. You could have literally put 2,500 stocks on the watch list tomorrow to the downside if the market confirms. And that really shows you where the sentiment lies. Again, anything's possible. Like I say this all the time. I'm not in the guessing business. I'm not in the forecasting business or I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the market's going to do tomorrow. If I, if I knew, I'd be max size overnight every single night. We don't know. We can only prepare for what's going to happen for tomorrow. But if you do uh, believe in technical analysis and you kind of know it works by now, uh, now we're looking at this uh, 50 day again, right? Excuse me, not the 50 day, the 150 day uh, moving average. Again, this is the area where the bulls kind of stood, you know, stood pat, made their stands and kind of reclaimed. Well, now it's on the table again. So this 73, 74 level uh, on the queues is going to be super important uh, for the next couple of days because any close below that 74 level on the rising support in the queues, well, then we start going back to uh, January 10 lows and then we start challenging this bottom range here of this whole macro bull market. So yeah, I, I would say tomorrow is important, right? Um, I, I know I wouldn't look at stocks tomorrow that were overly, uh, overly sold for the last three months. Like again, even though a name, for example, like a Zoom is going to go lower, there's no trade in Zoom. All Zoom does is, you know, it rallies a couple of days, gets rejected and kind of drifts lower. You want the names that had definitive bottoms put in for three days ago, right? Like I'll give you a perfect example. Let me give you guys a couple of names. Um, let me give you guys a couple of names uh, for tomorrow's session. So, for example, you know, look, look at names, for example, like a Microsoft, right? So you see Zoom. Zoom has just been drifting, drifting for weeks and weeks and months and months and months. Yeah, it's probably going to go lower, but the range is tightening and tightening and tightening. There's no advantage. It's just, again, you just assume it's going lower. But a name, for example, like a Microsoft, right, it has a definitive channel. You can see here the low of this channel was three days ago before the bounce started, right? And it put it at the exactly same low today. So if the market opens up green tomorrow and we start challenging the bottom of the range here, look how much room to go. But again, this is a defined area that needs to be uh, confirmed. A name like Avago, a name, another semiconductor name, right? Again, this is at least an area that it needs to confirm. Here's the rising 50-day moving average. It closed below it. If it confirms the 50-day moving average, it's going to go below. See, the, the last thing you want to do is look at a chart that's been going down for two, three weeks that are sitting in contracting channels, just drifting lower. Yeah, you could start a swing position there. But remember, at, at any given point, even a Zoom that lost all its luster, and I'm just using Zoom as kind of a whipping boy here for, for an example. But the problem is when you're, when you're trading a stock to the short side, like a Zoom, at any given point, the stock becomes intrinsic value to somebody. It, it's like somebody's somebody's diarrhea is somebody's treasure at this at this juncture this is all diarrhea but at any point a buyer could come back blah 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 and you get squeezed you have no points of reference right the only thing you could do is say well i'm going to short it here and use the previous days uh high as my stop but when you start looking at stocks that have a definitive channel that it already tested right like a paychecks like a microsoft like a vago like a ZS, right? You see this, all these channels, once these concrete channels start to, to, to really get uh, technically confirmed, that's when the aggressive expansion channels can start. So when you're doing your research tonight, you're gonna see thousands of charts that look terrible, right? Somebody's gonna turn around and say, what about Netflix? Netflix has Netflix been breaking down, right? Of course it's gonna go lower. You know, it's, it's reporting on what, January the 20th, that's when they really, tech earnings really uh, start to kick off. So of course this thing looks lower, but again, look where, look how much the stock, look where the real technical damage started. Again, this is my point uh, of looking at stocks that have definitive channels, right? You see this bottom of the channel here, how it stopped on the 150 day moving average and the next day it finally took it out. That confirmed the whole channel. That's the point of stocks like Avago and Microsoft and Paychex and ZS. They have definitive channels, definitive areas where they held. So if they know if those channels get confirmed, they're gonna get hit. So as much as Netflix looks lower, right? The, the trade was here, right? The trade was here, not down here. This is all continuation. Remember, there's only one breakout and everything else is continuation and there's only one breakdown and everything else is continuation. And the further it goes from its breakout or breakdown level, the higher probability you could always get a reversal. That's why these technical levels are super duper important because again, it gives you a point of reference where they held before and where they need to break now to confirm the price action. So going into tomorrow, I'm, I'm hoping for a gap up, right? I think all of us who are uh, sell buys are hoping for a gap up because if we do get a gap up after a really, really big sell-off today in the NASDAQ names, 
there's a high probability those stocks will get rejected into supply, they go green to red, and when if they start confirming today's channels, that's the launching pad, right? Or what's the opposite of a launching pad, right? The diarrhea attack. I used diarrhea twice now in the first nine minutes. That can't be good uh, going for the rest of the update. But you kind of get my point, right? You kind of get my point. Market goes up, market goes down. A lot of you guys who have been trading only for uh, a number, you know, a couple of years, you've never seen what a really, really aggressive sell bias market is. And again, nobody's saying this will be. The only point is we're just taking advantage of the data, what we're watching for possibly for tomorrow. And if stocks do confirm, uh, we might get a pretty aggressive uh, date to sell up. Now, obviously, a lot of names uh, that obviously I have not talked about are you know, kind of looking the same, right? You got Tesla, big, big reversal. He had a huge run up the last couple of days. Big rig reversal, you got Amazon. Uh, obviously, uh, you can see here the bottom channel here. You got NVIDIA, again, they came for the 260 uh, 260 puts, very, very short-term expiration. You can see the bottom of the channel here. So there's definitely a lot of names uh, that you can focus on, but the key is to focus on the names that are imminent for confirmation, not stocks that still need a day or two or six uh, to get to that level. So guys, uh, I have a basketball practice with my daughter. I am one of the coaches there. I will be, uh, I will be helping, check this out, I will be helping um, teach eight your eight great girls how to do a man-to-man -man press and a one two two full core press. God help me. God help me. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.